With us now, Dr. Jennifer Cottle. She's a family physician and associate professor at Rowan University's Department of Family Medicine. Uh, Dr. Cottle, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So understandably, uh, there are a lot of people who are, are feeling pretty melancholy this Easter, that they're not able to uh, continue their, their traditions. So the question is, when can people go back to those? Can you can go back to packing a church or a school or a football stadium or a restaurant for brunch before there is a vaccine? Well, for, first of all, we are all looking forward to the time when we can pack churches and pack stadiums and going, going back to having brunch. And I, I know you're right, Victor, that this is a really hard time for pretty much all of us. Um, you know, what's going to determine when we're able to get back to those things is a number of, of things. You know, Fauci has said that the virus is going to tell us um, when it's time to go back and how, and, and I think many of us agree with that. Um, you know, we're looking into many things such as antibody testing. Obviously we're looking into treatments and, and vaccines which are on the horizon, but also we still need more testing for the virus in general. All of those sort of elements um, interplaying are gonna eventually tell us when and how we can get back. So we're in a little bit of a wait and see pattern right now, um, but you know, we're, we're certainly hopeful that we can do that as soon as it's certainly safe to do it. And before we get to the viewer questions, Dr. Caudill, let me ask you about this, this testing that is so crucial. I mean, there's several kinds of testing. You have the, the swab, which will tell you right now if you have uh, COVID-19, but there's also the antibody testing, and that seems to be quite critical in, in determining you know, when you can start lifting social distancing measures and the like. Well, that's right, because, you know, we, we, this, the antibody testing for, for those who are listening, and I know this word has been thrown out a lot over the last few days, but the idea is when we test for antibodies to the virus, we're basically testing to see if you've been exposed to it, been infected with the virus, maybe haven't known that, and you have some sort of protection against that. Um, as you mentioned, it is potentially very crucial to determining maybe if we can send some people back into the workforce, if there are some people that can go back and, and or maybe the continue work if they're a healthcare worker and know that they're working safely because maybe they have some sort of protection. So that's what we talk about when we talk about this antibody testing. And that's, that's one of the reasons why it's, it's so important and will be, um, will be something really, really good to have. All right, let's get to some of uh, the questions from uh, our viewers. I'm gonna start with uh, this one that I received uh, on Twitter. Uh, a viewer asks, after returning home from the grocery store, from grocery shopping, is it recommended that we change clothes, take a shower, what should we do? Yeah, actually I saw that, that, that uh, question on Twitter, um, response to your question about the coronavirus questions. You know, this is a common question that people are asking. So, so we know that coronavirus is primarily spread by person-to-person -person contact and the, and the spread of respiratory droplets. We also know that we can get the virus by touching an object with the virus on it and then maybe touching our face, et cetera, and, and getting infected that way. Those are the primary ways of spread. Now, theoretically, is it possible to get coronavirus on your clothing? Yeah, theoretically it is. We do not think that's a likely form of spread, but just to be on the safe side, you know, something I do is um, when I come in from outside, I have my outside and my inside clothes. Uh, I take my outside clothes off and put on my lounging gear, inside clothes. I also leave my shoes at the door, or right outside the door. Uh, those are certainly things that you can do. So you're talking about uh, COVID-19 being uh, spread mostly person to person. We know the CDC recommended a days ago that people could and should wear face coverings or masks uh, when they go out in public like grocery stores where it's hard to uh, enforce social distancing. One viewer asks uh, on Twitter, if someone sneezes in a supermarket, how long does it stay in the air and would a cloth mask help reduce getting it? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. Well, you know, sneezes, believe it or not, sneezes can be quite forceful and can really sort of expunge and expel a lot of air and respiratory droplets and things like that at a very, very high rate. You know, it's not possible to say exactly how fast um, the particles coming out of a sneeze uh, go. It's going to be different for every person. But that brings me back to the point of the mask, which that viewer also asked about. It's one of the reasons why masks are very important. And we have to remember that the recommendation to wear cloth masks, which is our recommendation now, um, 
is really to protect other people from us. So me wearing a mask is to uh, keep other people safe from me if I were to sneeze or cough. It's to keep my particles to myself. So yes, it's another reason why masks are, are really important. Here's another one. A relative wants to visit from Atlanta to Louisville for a couple of weeks. Can she do that without a quarantine? And would you even suggest that she do so right now? No, no travel, no travel right now at all. I'm going to say a big no to that one. Uh, we know that many states have travel. Most all of us are are travel restricted. Um, this is not the time to travel. We actually should be social distancing. That means staying away from people that are not in our immediate household, uh, not just the six feet away when we're out and about getting our groceries and essential items, but we should be staying away from others. Uh, this is not the time to travel. And another a question that I uh, had actually for, for you as well, can someone who recovered from COVID-19 be reinfected? Oh, that's a great question. So uh, we do believe at this point that once you get COVID-19 and you recover from it, that you will likely have some immunity. Um, that means you'll be protected likely from getting it again. Now, how much immunity you're going to have and for how long, we just don't know that yet. And I, I always have to say that the information really with this uh, condition is evolving. So we have a lot to learn. But, uh, you know, we don't think it's going to be likely uh, that you get reinfected. But again, for how long and how much immunity you have, uh, those are things that are still really up in the air. It's like we don't know uh, enough about uh, immunity when right. it comes to this disease. Appreciate you joining us, Dr. Jennifer Cottle. Thank you very much. Thank you.